Hello and welcome, I'm Andrew Goodman. Currently I'm making video tutorials on Affinity Photo for the iPad, teaching you how to use this fantastic app. In this video, I'll be looking at text in the Affinity Photo, and in particular, I'll be looking into adding text, choosing fonts, changing font colors, showing several ways how to change the font size, duplicating text, changing the case of the text, an overview of the text studio, finding and installing a font, adding layer effects to text, and much more. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's just click into Affinity Photo on the iPad. And we're gonna go back into our project, our Back to the Future project, where we've been working on the past few videos. You can see this is where we left off with the guides. I'm just gonna turn the guides off for now. Just hide them and then also just hide the margins. So that's what we have at the minute. And now we want some text. I've got some text here, the Back to the Future logo, but we'll, we'll add some text. The original Back to the Future poster has uh, Steven Spielberg presents a Robert Zemeckis film. So we'll maybe add that up here and we'll maybe do something else. We'll see how we get on. And text to Affinity Photo, very easy. We just click on the text tool. And what's really nice about Affinity Photo is if you click and drag up, you can actually straight away get an idea of what size of... of text you want so we'll say about that size it has this in the pen tool but if i click into on the font list we can see straight away we can choose many different fonts it has the most recent at the top and then we can go on down so for this i'll maybe choose this one and we'll make it bold and we'll see what size that is. So, yep, we're good to text here. We're good to write now. So I'll put down my Apple Pencil and we'll get writing. I've made a mistake, not on purpose, but for the for the point of this video, it's quite good. So if you, I just simply clicked before the D, capital S, Steven Spielberg. If you want to go back, just move or just... Sometimes it can be a wee bit fiddly. Just click after the G space. And then presents Steven Spielberg presents. And if we highlight that all from the start, we don't want it black. We want it white. So I'll scroll. We, I just clicked on the keyboard there. We'll go up to our color studio and simply just drag that down to white. Then if I click on our text, Steven Spielberg presents. So it's a wee bit big at the minute. We can highlight it and come down here to change the size of it. We can also hold and drag it one way or the other, which is a nice wee feature. You can also go to the good at that if it's also if you've also got the text layer selected on the text studio if you hold it you can go up and down so there's many ways of uh changing the size we'll go into the text studio to see what all we can do if i want to say double tap on this highlight the steven spielberg bit maybe under this yep double t's Normally in the poster, if I remember correct, Steven Spielberg presents. Steven Spielberg is in capital letters and then presents all lowercase and a wee bit smaller. If I click on the move tool, I'll maybe zoom in a wee bit. And uh, hopefully snapping is enabled, which it is. I'll maybe bring our guides back up that we were looking at in the last layer. And that will help us just... Yep, just snap there. Steven Spielberg presents. Well, let me just hide the guides now again. And that's the great thing about the guides. If you didn't, if you don't know about guides, check out my last video where we dived deep in the guides and setting them up. So Steven Spielberg presents, and then we'll do a Robert Zemeckis film. I think that's maybe just a wee bit too big. So I'll click in the text studio. If we hit back, again, you can put the point value in. Let's try 18. Maybe that looks a wee bit 
wee bit better. And again, I've turned guides off. I'll maybe just keep guides on for the time being to position this right. So that's in the middle. Steven Spielberg presents. Normally it's Steven Spielberg presents Back to the Future and then a Robert Zemeckis film below it. But I like where the logo is. So we'll maybe just put Robert down below here. I'll maybe just duplicate this layer. Again, hold one finger and we can duplicate that. And then if we move it, that's the layer, duplicate it, and by double tapping into it and highlighting, we can just type in. So at the minute, it's got the pen icon. I don't want the pen icon. If we just click into the font, cancel that, and then we can type. There we go. So I'll put the pencil down. And that's still uppercase, so we'll maybe... We'll maybe do it. I quite like the uppercase. What we'll maybe do is we'll just drag that bit, and that's at 18 points. I'll maybe bring this down to 12 points. Again, highlight A, click on it, and if we just hit 12 and OK, we'll bring that down. And I kind of like the look of that more than the lowercase, so we'll do the same up here. So simply click, drag. We'll make this lowercase by going in. I make it uppercase, sorry. Click on it. 12, OK, and that's looking quite nice. Now we'll probably have to put this back in the middle and then click on this layer. Again, from one of the other videos, you'll remember, if we just click on the layer with the Move tool, it'll highlight it. And we'll see how that looks. And that's not looking too bad at all. I'll maybe just move this layer down a wee bit. The clock tower one. We'll over move it down. That's all we've got to play with. It's just maybe too close to the text. Maybe that's okay. We'll just hide the layers again. Or the grid, sorry. Guides. So we are. It's really coming on actually. Uh, I didn't expect to be working on this video after video, but it's, it's building up into a quite nice poster and we've got the Back to the Future, we've got the Back to the Future 1 here, 2, and then 3 in the background. So maybe just for fun, we will add Trilogy in here, and we'll try to get it at the same font or the same style, and that'll bring into the Effects Studio 2. So we'll maybe do that, and that'll also show you how to install a font into Affinity Photo. Before I do that, I'll go back into the Text Studio, just to run down a few things. Again, you can click on it. You can click on the text with the move tool and it'll bring down, it'll bring in some items here, the font, a different kind of font, bold, regular, italics, the size, bold, alignment, and then text layers. It also brings up the, the text studio where again we've got, you can change the font here, you can change the size, bold, change the color, underline, all normal things that you find in Photoshop and other packages. Go into text positioning, we can change the positions of different things. Go back out again. We've already been in this one where we've made it uppercase. Spacing for paragraphs. There's so, there's so, so much you can do in Affinity Photo. I'm just going to click out of that. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to put Back to the Future and we'll have the words Trilogy in here in the Back to the Future font and try to get it looking in the same style. So the first thing we need to do is go and find this font. So let's go into Google Chrome now. I'll simply just type in Back to the Future font. Uh, da Font is a very popular font website. So I'm just going to go into that. Accept. Back to the Future. Yep, that looks good. So we're just going to download this. Click Download and then go into Files. Go to Chrome. Let's just unzip it. So that's where our file is located. So if we go back into Affinity Photo and to install a font into Affinity Photo, you have to go back out and into Settings, down to Fonts. These are the fonts I have already installed in. So if we click on the cloud icon, navigate your way to where the font's stored. I probably navigated to the Chrome folder in the past, so it automatically knows it's the default location for me. 
go into the folder and then .tt, click into it and if we scroll up, oh there we are at the bottom, back to the future font, done. Go back into it. Now if we click on our font icon, we'll just bring it up here. Right, that size looks okay. And just navigate your way back to the future. Regular. And then we'll we'll simply just type in trilogy. We'll put it in the position. Two fingers again will move the canvas. We'll maybe move this up. Oh, that's again a, a, a layer moving up. Move this up just a wee bit and then we'll bring this down like that. And that looks okay. I'm going to be going into Layer Effects Studio. We will be exploring this studio more in another tutorial coming up. But just for now, just to give you a bit of a taste, let's click our icon. Go into the studio. First thing I want to do, I'll zoom in nice and tight is outline so if we click an outline and apply it nothing happens that's because the radius this new menu now has come up the contextual menus come up if we make the radius maybe what's that maybe about 16. if we hit color and use the color picker we'll go to the exact color of blue so that looks a wee bit big we'll maybe just use our finger to bring it down a wee bit that's not looking too bad. I think that'll do us actually. And then if we go to the gradient, so we'll click the gradient and again, we'll click the gradient black color wheel. We'll go for this nice dark orange. And then if we click the white again, color wheel, we'll go to the nice bright yellow. Just tap out and that is looking well. Now it's not the right way, but we're almost there. Simply by clicking this arrow. We've got a few more functions. So if we come to angle, if we change the angle to about 90 degrees, if we just click on it again, you can use your finger to change the angle. Or if you click on it, 90 degrees and there we are. You can offset it. You can do different things, push it up and down. The X obviously goes that way, so that, that'll not change. We'll just zero it out. The Y will make go up and down, but I'm happy just where it is. Sometimes in Affinity, when you do click it, it will give you just a, a few helpful values to see if you're typing it in. So if we drag back, that is not, that's not looking too bad at all. I'll maybe just make it a wee bit smaller. Snap it in the middle. I'll maybe then go into the effects studio again. Outline. Maybe bring the outline down to maybe maybe seven. I'm being very picky here. I'll maybe just put it back up to eight. I'll hide our guides and our margins. Then this button up here just clears all the navigation away and uh, that's looking quite good. Uh, we've learned quite a bit about text. We've uh, added these two text items up here and even went into some layer styles. And yep, I'm pretty happy with that. So there you have it. Hopefully you have a really good understanding now of using text in Affinity Photo. And if there's anything you missed or anything you want to go over again, please look at the chapters in the description below. I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video. And if you want to see more videos on Affinity Photo, more training, please hit the subscribe button. And if you liked this video, check out the last video where I explore snapping, grids and guides. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.